you have a gorgeous new painting and suddenly with a flick of the wrist, you mess up an area or maybe you've dripped some paint on an area you shouldn't have and you've made a mistake. What do we do? Today, I'll give you five tips on what to do when you make that dreaded mistake. and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I'm a professional artist and illustrator. And today we'll be talking all about watercolor mistakes and what to do when you make one. So people often assume that just because you're a pro artist or professional or you're experienced that you don't make mistakes anymore and somehow you're just perfect all the time. But let me tell you that that couldn't be further from the truth. While yes, as you get more experienced, you're less likely to make the same mistakes you used to when you were just a beginner. I think part of the journey of being an artist is appreciating that we do make mistakes. And in fact, I think, you know, a mark of courage is to have the audacity to do something, you know, a little risky and out of the box that could end up being a mistake. Um, I think that mistakes are essential to growth. So let's just take a minute to appreciate that. Okay, so coming back to the subject of this video, we're gonna talk all about disaster mitigation. And that leads me to tip number one, which is lifting. Let's say you're painting something and all of a sudden, you know, color bleeds in an area it shouldn't go. Or maybe you have a rogue brush stroke that you need to remove ASAP. So first thing to do is to take a deep breath and don't panic because your first line of defense is a technique called lifting. Just like watercolor pigment can be placed onto your paper, it can also be lifted off. So on the tail of this butterfly, I have a brush stroke, which is obviously a mistake. If I'm quick enough, I can just grab a paper towel or napkin and pat on the mistake, and that should be enough to lift most of that mistake off. If there's still a little bit of residual paint left on the paper, I can grab a paintbrush, wet the bristles with some clean water, and work it into the paper using a scrubbing motion. Dry your paintbrush on a paper towel and then use that same brush to lift off the water and pigment from the page. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, you'll love using this trick over and over again. And that brings me to tip number two, which is covering up. Now, what happens if your pigment has settled so far into your paper and it's just impossible to remove all that color from your surface? The next best bet is to try to cover it up, either with an intentionally darker color or by layering some gouache on top. If you're not familiar with gouache, it's a great extra tool to have in your arsenal and you can definitely mix and match that with watercolors. And I have a video all about the difference between watercolor and gouache, which I'll link in the card above if you want to know the whole story about what distinguishes the two one from the other. So I have a illustration of Rockefeller Center done in watercolor and in ink, and this is kind of a whimsical illustration, but I have an area where the ink kind of bled into my windows. So I want to repair that with some white gouache. And because gouache is opaque, it's the perfect medium to cover up any errors that you have. So I'm just going to take my paintbrush and as you can see, it'll just look like the white of the paper. And it's really not noticeable if you're looking at it from far away or if you're scanning your work and getting it digitized on the computer. In fact, I always have a tube of white gouache on my desk for this precise reason. And that leads me to tip number three, which is creative cover-up. Now, this tip is kind of a close cousin to the previous tip. Um, however, this one requires a little bit more creativity on your part. Um, this one actually reminds me of uh, a TV show called Tattoo Nightmares. And the whole premise of the show is that clients would come into a tattoo parlor with botched tattoos. And the artists had to find a creative way of transforming someone else's mess into something that looked, you know, beautiful. The thing here is that it does take a little bit more time and thought and planning um, before you begin to execute. So let's get back to a real life example. I have another butterfly design with a big blob of ultramarine blue that got away from me on the right wing. And so what I'm going to try to do here is to distract the viewer from that mistake by creating more motifs and more details um, or just anything that can distract the viewer from that mistake. Depending on your subject matter, that could be either creating darker values or patterns or um, other motifs or other elements in the painting that will redirect the viewer's attention to maybe another 
part of the painting. So in this case with the butterfly, I'm taking some more of that ultramarine, which was the color that actually was the mistake color, and spreading it around to other areas of the painting and just trying to salvage whatever I have here, um, you know, by rolling with it and improvising wherever I can to not fix, but to hide my mistake. Next tip is tip number four, which is leaning in. And this tip by far requires the most courage on your part because it means embracing and leaning into your mistake. Now, I for one think that some of the most intriguing and interesting artistic interpretations come from when we get comfortable with showing our more vulnerable side. I think it's the same for most art forms, whether you're a singer or a writer or a musician. I think the interesting parts of what makes your art unique and different from anybody else comes from when you focus on getting more comfortable with yourself and your own quirks and your own oddities and tendencies. And and so leading into that, so whether you tend to use really thick blobby brush strokes or maybe you use colors that are very unrealistic in real life, maybe those things are things that you should lean into and embrace as part of your own style and something that you should maybe highlight in your artwork. Of course, that totally depends also on what, mis what that mistake is and what you're comfortable putting out there. Um, but let me give you an example. I was recently doing an illustration of these watermelon dancers, kind of a funny, whimsical idea, perfect for the summer. But anyway, I was adding the seeds to the watermelon areas when suddenly my paintbrush slipped and I inadvertently added a black brush stroke, AKA a seed, outside of the area where it belonged. So what did I do? Instead of trying to cover it up or trying to pull it off, I decided to just lean into my mistake and um, add more of those brush strokes around the rest of the negative space around my dancers. And so this was just a way of making that intentional design choice um, in my artwork. And I think that the result makes it even more whimsical and even more fun. Okay, so if you've reached this last tip, thank you so much for sticking with me for this entire video. And if you're enjoying it so far, don't forget to hit the like button um, because it really helps with being able to grow this channel um, and recommend it to other people who are looking for similar content. All right, so tip number five is going to be probably the most uncomfortable to many people. If none of the above tips help and you really have a bona fide catastrophe on your hands, um, sometimes it's just best to move on. I know it sounds like I'm recommending quitting as an option, but I think that there's a difference between quitting something and trying to force something that isn't working out. Sometimes you'll save yourself far more time just starting over or moving on to another idea than trying to frantically fix something that you know just is just not working out. So before getting upset with yourself and thinking you totally wasted your time on something, give yourself a reminder that this is practice and learning and ultimately how you're gonna get better. Um, I don't think it's a waste of time at all if you learn something about your mistake. So be kind to yourself and recognize that this is a training session instead of a botched painting. So those are my five tips. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below if you have other techniques and other things that you do when you mess up your paintings. Um, and also if you have any questions about today's content, the video, um, or any questions about supplies, technique, all that good stuff, I'm here to help you. And so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I try to respond to as many comments um, as I can. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm here to help you in your journey. As always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me, and I will see you next week.